the start. Connect. And here we and go. And here we go. A minute late. Oh, no. It's all your fault, Miss Mary. You made me do all that well, technical stuff. It's door killer. I'm telling you. Dorky shit happens. And we are Flash and Miss Graham Z at the Dork Table oh. on the 11th of January 2020. Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? Mm-hmm. One, mm-hmm. one, one, two, zero, two, zero. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> let me, dork <laughs> announcement for the beginning of the show. I've seen an interesting little thing, little meme on the internet. It was reminding people that when you date a document and you put your month and day, be sure to double up on 2020 or you can end up with a document that was post dated 2011, 2016. You know, oh. They could just add the, something to the 20. So, yeah. Well, it's valuable knowledge if you use dates and shit and you're worried about people that are going to take advantage of your naivety. Naivety as in naivete. Well, we were discussing today. that before the before the show. Let's say let's say hi to Grim and to the bots and bodies, and we'll, we'll get oh, on to be our a lag wow. because uh, well, because Dork Cakes finally said sounds great. Okay, well that's and then fine. Somebody, yeah, three we're, minutes. We're, yeah, we came on two, we came on one minute late. We're I, I'm doing my my Stevie Wonder head bobble thing because we're having some technical difficulties and okay. so I'm trying. To, whoa, yeah, but my screen my, head, my screen huh? says broadcasting on all streams and the other one didn't. The other one was brutal. ah, it was brutal and abrasive. Oh, you were having issues with your stream. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, hey, <laughs> Mister Grim out there in. Uh, New Mexico land where the land is large and the Jews are still small. And then we've got, <laughs> yeah, he lives in one of 11 states out of uh, 50 that don't have any actual legal in, uh, interference from Israel. Mm. 26 states do, 13 are pending, 11 do not. New Mexico got my attention because I know somebody who lives there. You know what? Grim wants to know if when you date a document, does the document put out? Depends on the person writing, I would suppose. You know, because oh. if you're drunk enough, you know, a man will fuck anything. Ham sandwich, bowl of stew. <laughs> I mean, come on. Oy. <laughs> anyway, butts and don't bodies. <laughs> Just, I'm going to say hi. Yeah, I was just making sure that the children aren't still listening to the show. Because we're going to get into some deep adult topics today on the dark table. After we say hi to the bots and the bodies. Yeah, right up top we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Barman. Closely followed by Beetle. 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 Mm. And Pippi. Because Beetle, Beetle doesn't go and anywhere Pippi. without Pippi. There you go. Team yeah. 13. We also got a... Got a Grimner and a Moose Goil, uh, and they was on Freakers Ball last night. I think they was on Freakers Ball last night. Yeah, I, they, I went they to were. Bed. They were definitely. Yeah, I, I passed out early last night in the living room, so I woke up at like four o'clock in the fucking morning. Went, what the hell? Oh, so I figured I'd just stay up. Mm. And guess what? I listened to instead of Bullwinkle and Rocky reruns, I put on the Freakers Ball. Live. There you go. Live in Denmark. Well, the babies are sleeping. Yay. That's right. There you go. Watch the whole I perimeter also... all by myself. No invasions or anything. You'd have been proud of me. I would have been oh, proud yes. of you. Yeah. Another war-free day in Denmark. Amazing. Isn't Yay. It? And now we also have an anti in the chat room as well as an Asmodeus Asmo. Anti Asmo. And a Chalcedony. As well as yours truly, Graham Z. Yeah. Uh-huh. Got a Java, 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 Dr. T. Java, Because we need the new and improved because I need some Java today because mm-hmm. I did not. See, you woke up like four in the morning your time and I didn't sleep for doodly squat last night. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I need the Java today. Oh, well, I slept like a brick. 
is what happened. Because I got up early Friday. Cirque decided she wanted to go into the office Friday. After staying home all week, she wants to go to work on a fucking Friday. So I get up with her when she does. And that just oh, there went, you go. Yeah, but I didn't take a nap. So Friday night came around. And I thought, I'll sit here and watch a movie. You know? <laughs> next, ah. next thing I know, it's tomorrow. <laughs> hey, see, it happens. Growing it old happens. is... Growing old is a lot like going backwards. Let me tell you. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, got a Meister Bra in the chit chat as well Woody. as a Poopster and Prince. Poopster and Prince. And the lovely Miss Kate down in Florida, mm-hmm. where I'm sure it's nice and balmy, as opposed to here where it's freaking bursy. You got Kate. Um, I got Rob Wirt. Yeah, I got a Rob Works in there, too, as well as the oh, lovely Rose. Rose. <laughs> yeah, he was running got around half... white here. Hey, Rums is running around half naked in Ohio today bragging about it on the RLM. Trying to tell him, hey, you need to go get dressed for the sake of everybody else. <laughs> well, I'm you kidding. know, some people just don't have I'm any gas kidding. for that. You know, they're out of give a shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I also uh, see Vanna White and Weather Dork. You know, they're a couple. Did you know that? They're no. Couple. Oh, Hank they're, is going to be furious. They're botting each other. <laughs> Crap. H- Hank's going to rip out some of these vocal cords. Whoops. Eh. Oh, yeah. Hank's eh. got a temper. Ooh. We got the Phantom here, too. Do you know that? The, the Phantom. Phantom. Help, help. Phantom. Mm-hmm. And a CC66 as well as Chastura. A lovely cycle. Hello, honey. Uh, also got a cyborg noodle, so may you be touched yeah, by the cyborgian noodliness of it all. I keep your noodle right. off me. Hey. I don't want nobody's hey. noodle on. I got enough Rob noodle was for it. with someone's crotchety, too, damn it. <laughs> don't, be, don't be messing with someone else's crotchety. Wow. That's, you, that's pervy. Dirty I also see the dork cakes is here. Hey, Dude. mental. It's a dork cakes. Got an E-Man, E-Man. and n Siv, as well as a Flasher. Somebody Flasher's even in the chit-chat. There well I am, Miss Mary. My name is in lights right there on the screen right before me. Right oh, there. I am right famous there. and stuff. Ooh. Yes, you are. We got a double <laughs> dose of Frumpy, too. Frumpy! He's working. Oh, yeah. He's stranded up there in Canada, but he'll, he'll escape someday and go to Florida. In Kanakistan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also see a grommet as well as JJ's 999 from Scotland and some pompa pompa pond sauce and sock puppet. Sock making a weird face. Sock puppet. In the chat. Well, of course. The hay. We also got a smartaz oh, and the holiest Roger ever. Oh. And deep picks to round out the crew. So there's everybody over here on the Aralumanumanum chat. Yeah. And hello to everybody else who might be listening in. Yeah, you lucky people out there in Radio Land. But yeah. today, on this dork table fiasco, I thought of something different. I think. So, okay. I approached Miss Mary before the podcast. She had ten whole minutes to ponder my question. And today's show is called Blame Evil for All Your Bad Ideas. And our topic today is that seven things that turned out to suck ass. And you know, what? I think Flip Wilson's the one that that really popularized <laughs> that blame evil. The devil made me do it. I remember him. Cross dresser on TV in the nineteen and seventies. How weird. I anyway, know. I know. Now, we, I've, you know, another <sighs> first from way back in days of yore, mm-hmm. the farmer and I actually watched the Star Trek where the first interracial kiss occurred. Uh, Although it's not interracial Kirk, because yeah. they're both humans. Yeah, but. Kirk and uh, the girl that did the. Uhura. Uhura. That's. Oh, what a fucking name. How do you forget a fucking name like that? Uhura. Uhura. Well, cause I don't they, know. Because I, I, that's why I can't speak Danish. Is I can't say weirdo words like... And then that's like most of Danish right there. All those weird sounds that you don't make in English. And you know what they say about us, right? Yeah. Look at all those weird sounds those American people make. 
poor guys. It's hard to speak English. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's just the other guy. Anyway, so on hey. our on our we came up with seven. I wanted to go for ten, but we we went. Wow, what are we going to talk about? And we there's not in a particular order. This is just the way that we wrote them. And the first thing we came up with things that turned out to suck ass time. So let's hear your. Well, you want to go first on this one. You want to do like uh, just fuck it, go with it. See how far you can go with the topic. Like the time thing? Yeah, because, well, I think... See, I don't really have a problem with time itself, because without time, you wouldn't be able to look back at your past and all that fun stuff. you got to have some kind of concept of time. It's that whole thing of being a slave to it and the damn clocks. I mean, you look outside and the sun's coming up, it's morning. You look outside and the sun's pretty high, it's noonish time especially if you get the rumblies and the tumbly and then you look outside and you see the sun is getting ready to go to bed that means it's nighttime or evening and you know if you look outside and you got stars upon stars it's nighttime so those are times those are times that are all just peachy kino and and all that fun stuff but when you got a damn clock that's telling you it's time to get up time to get up Time to get up in the morning, go to work, be a good drone. Time to get up in the morning. That's just nonsense. Yeah. Sorry, Mary. It's just... <laughs> wow. Uh, I thought this you would be a... to go off. Yeah, so but I, I, I just thought this would be more serious than that. That's all. It, you're making a good point. It's just in a funny, amusing way. Well, you know, sometimes the best lessons in life come with a giggle along the way, even if it's a giggle at someone else's expense. Oh, so you you pick on the weak-minded. Well, you know, I really enjoy that Jan, that uh, Ricky Gervais thing on Golden Globes. I would never watch an award show, but I have watched that video like 50 times now. Because it just doesn't get old. It's freaking funny. Best to watch their faces. It's like, oh, is he going to say my name next? Well, anyway, but about the time thing, I think uh -huh. how, what I was looking for is most people that I speak to, if I ever get into this topic in the first place, when I do, don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. I I don't okay. I don't like to live by the clock. If there's anything that'll fuck me up, it's the clock. I can never be on time for shit. I'm either early or I'm late. Period. Just I'm not perfect where I can hit that clock thing. So I've learned to despise it. Hmm. And unlike you. My dates, my memories don't have dates to them. Some of them go back to childhood. A few, not a whole lot, but there's still a few young memories in there. And then every now and again, something will come to mind I haven't thought of in like, I don't know, 55 years. But there's still no time attached. It's just a memory, something, boom. But, yeah, but without without the concept of time, hmm. how would you have memories? Because everything would all be now then. Well, but everything is now, it, so it really doesn't I don't make know any that fun. I don't know that it's time that sucks ass. I think it's freaking clocks. It's well, clocks. For the sake of giving it a definition, clocks is kind of vague because then you're blaming the machine. Me, I'm blaming well, the concept because, like, we did the thing about the uh, the. Uh, Black's Law Dictionary. Things are explained to us in ways that are similar to what they truly are, but they're not completely true. So we're not completely doing something wrong, but it could be done better if it was approached properly. Oh, and, yeah. Right? Like the, uh, oh, here. See, that's what I mean about this jumps around from topic to topic or identifier to identifier. Hmm. Because now time goes to, let me get my notes back up here. That just brought me to, shit, money, politics, religion, <laughs> belief systems. They all seem intertwined, energy sources. But mm -hmm. the clock thing, you know, you can't blame the clock. What? So I think it's time. 
Time is a man-made thing. There's no proof that it exists. We agree with it. Can't show well, me any concept, yeah. And it's an inaccurate motherfucking system too, or we wouldn't have leap year this year. Which is this year. So, in my opinion, what they've done is they've made the equation fit the math solution they like. And that eh, that's not how I live. I mean, that's that's not how I want to live. I want to be beyond, well, they said so. Okay, well, why'd they say so? Well, you know, you have this, you have the concept of time, and then you have this whole thing of being a slave to it. Because, you know, i got to get up in the morning because i got to go to work because i got to do this because i got to do that. And then people say, well, I don't have any time to do that. And you look at them and say, you don't have any time because you got some time right now or you're just not going to take the time or make the time to do that. So, uh, hmm. Yeah, it takes you right back to where you started when you talk about it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, we mm-hmm. all know what this all crap, but without it, you're stuck. And with it, you're trapped. So I guess that was my point of of seven things that turned out, you know, they seem like good ideas because you can use them to benefit you. But when you see how they work against you, ooh, hey, that's not so fair. Hey, let's just... You you have this manipulation thing going on. And speaking of manipulation, let's jump to money. I... You know a little bit about money, right, Miss Mary? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Now, now, here's the the, tr- the tricky part of this. Is there's two kinds of money. There's the currency that we spend in the society to do our little dance to the big banks. And then there's the money the big banks trade in that got nothing to do with us. We just the, we're just the labor to fuel it and to, and, and there there's a third kind okay. that is tangible and yet not tangible because time is money. Your time is valuable. It has a value to it, and therefore it is also a form of money or exchange. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. See? Well, I so, thought you were going to say something I didn't know. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Oh, well, no, I just... and We've been at this a long time. It's really hard to come up with something new the other guy's not going to be familiar with. Come on. Well, yeah. It's not like this yeah. is a... a there's a billion choices to all... The, no, there is, there's the truth and there's the bullshit we live with. And you can only change one thing at a time, but there's lots of things that you can change to improve shit so you're not miserable. And yet if you change just one thing, Hmm. imagine the snowball effect that would happen if you change the right thing. Well, there's really not much to imagine. I think it's more of just deciding to do things. Look at, I, I walk to the store and tails my body going through all kinds of cells, getting killed, and, you know, this change and that change in the, in the one hour that I'm gone. Physically, I've done a bunch of shit I don't even know I've done. Mm-hmm. Right? All right. Well, mm-hmm. there you go. And then we got the luxury of being aware of stuff that we can control, but we don't know that we can control it. We think it's all at ha- you know, happenstance. and Oh, I was lucky. and look No, no. It ain't really like that. You vibrate in a frequency. Tap into it. If you can, this gets really more, the older I get and the more things, good things that happen from thinking of this stuff when I do it. Here, I'll tell you a quick story. I'm at the okay. grocery store today. Packed fucking Saturday. Jeez, I, I have real trouble in that. But two people ahead of me is the bartender that I drink with down the road. And uh, here we're chitter chattering because it's slow. We can't get can't, there's no movement in the store, so we're just standing. There. How are you doing today? But well, he gets to the end, pays for his stuff, and when I watch him, he puts his cash back in his pocket, but he missed his pocket, and dropped it on the floor. Mm-hmm. I went, "Hey, better pick that up." Went, oh, thank you. 
but he really didn't notice. I gave it enough time for him to bend over and pick up what he would have noticed he dropped, but he didn't. So, and it wasn't like a big deal. This might have been 400 kroner or something, a little stack of 100 kroner bills. But mm -hmm. it was more the uh, the action than in the, taking the time to do it at all got me a, a smile out of him. His, it's not the money thing. It's more the idea that, hey, you looking out for me. Because that's what I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, see, it's made English or Danish or whatever, broken English. It, it, some things translate without words. You just know it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot yeah, of us there, have, there are some things you just plain just know. And a lot of us have been conditioned to not trust your how you feel about things. Go with what you're told, not how you feel. And I was raised complete opposite of that. It's all subjective. And, hey, being objective is fine if you're trying to pass a fucking test in a school somewhere or get a job. But in physical life, daily interaction with people, that shit doesn't work. Yeah. I don't think so. I think being emotional is just as normal as breathing or sweating. You can't well, stop I think it. That's, that's all a part of the human experience. Well, people should get lightened up about, you know, how responsible they are about certain things and be more responsible about things they don't know they're responsible for and get the balance back. It's definitely been tilted. Like, you notice how quiet this thing got with the Greta crap once the kid got wore out and they sent her home? She can't keep up the pace. They broke her. A couple of months, they fucking wore her ass out. It's done. Yeah. There you go. There's your great leader. What? Well, they used her up and spit her out but is that, basically what happened. Most of us were complaining about that from the beginning, but then it was, oh, you child abuse. Oh, they, yeah, quit picking yeah, on that poor yeah, little kid. Yeah. I'm not picking on that poor no. little kid. I'm picking on her parents, parents and saying, quit abusing the child. I put myself in those shoes. What would I be trying to accomplish if I was to take my 15-year-old blood daughter and parade her around like some kind of chess piece in a game? And I came up with, I'd be treating her like a chess piece in a game, trying to make money off her. And I don't think I would, no, nah, I'm not cut out like that. So I can't respect that, you know, hey, look at these people saw the possibilities with this poor child, and they, they capitalized off her. Oh, fuck, give me a break. Grow up out of all that stupid shit and see the fucking thing the way it really is. It will surprise you. I got bumped off the uh, uh, RLM. Are you there? Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. I was just checking. Yeah, well, sometimes it happens. Oh, yeah, you did. I see that yeah. now. I'm going yeah. back. I'm going to slap Ping. Grim right in his Time forehead. With my, I'm gonna, you know those things that snick? You get your thumb and your middle finger, and then you go. Clink. Oh, the little flicking thing? Oh, uh, right, up, right up on the ear. Ow, yeah, I remember my dad doing that. That hurt. Yeah, and then, you know, dad's got hands like bricks. Yeah. So, well, now I'm that guy. So, you know, if I was to do that to somebody, I wouldn't really understand from my own perspective, hey, that fucking hurts, you little prick, because I don't think I'm that very big and strong. But the hands have been around for quite a few years. Mm hmm. Hmm. Anyway, we went from time to money, and then I ranted about something, and I think we got you back. Ah, I got booted off the. Uh, LibertyMedia.com for bad behavior. Yeah, well, you know, you're <sighs> being a flasher. <laughs> at, least, at least I didn't. Well, it was just the computer kicked me off, not the, not the uh, folks at Real Liberty. <laughs> ah. I'm not that kind of troublemaker, Miss Mary. I thought you knew that. What, that you're not a troublemaker? <laughs> oh, well, I only with one person. It's not oh, like they don't okay. ask for it. Come on. I, mean, uh, how, I think if all they have to do is show up and you start stirring the shit pot with them. Oh, that's just a horrible rumor. So, do you want to know what you want to know what I have questions about money that people refuse to freaking touch? They will not answer the 
One, I'll start right with the very, very first question I never get an answer to. Ready for it? You've heard it a hundred times. Go for it. Shoot it. All right. All right. Now, Federal Reserve Bank established in 19, what was it, 1900-something, 13, there you go. And all these years, this is a 20, fucking 20. So that means for all these years, this bank has been printing money and selling it to the government, right? With a fee uh-huh. attached, but with a fee. So they're not just buying that dollar bill for $1 straight across. No, no, no. They're making a profit off that dollar. Okay, now, when did they ever print the money in all these hundred years to pay the debt accumulated by that added fucking value? And then they talk about they're in debt. Well, that doesn't even start to t- talk about that debt. They're talking about the debt they've accumulated with trading and bad business. What about the fucking interest money? Where the hell is that going to ever come from? There you go. Well, it's all created out of thin air, so. Right, but that you know. doesn't give any, that's the whole point. That's the devaluation side of this issue, not the value side. The point that we don't have any fucking currency with any value. It's all in God we trust. What the fuck does that even mean? Who in their right mind in 2020 is going to hold a bit of paper and believe anything that piece of paper says on it? You'd have to be an idiot. Well, I want to know what God they're trusting in. Is it Odin? Uh, Is it Beelzebub? I think it's Mort Troutner from New Jersey. Mort Troutner from New Jersey. Yeah, he, oh, oh, he okay. thought he was God. Yeah. So, yeah, he qualifies. I figure anybody that looks at their self and tells you they're godly, they're godly. Okay. Sure. I to them. Godly. Exactly. You could identify as a toaster. Hell, you could identify as a man and compete against men as a woman. As a man, I don't be I, a woman. I don't want to identify as a toaster, though. I want to really? identify as a turkey pop-up timer. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Just like a female. Ouch. It is winter. I guess. Where would you put that kind of instrument? I, I Wait, you want to be one. Coming out of what? What are you going to time, you pervert? I'm... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be like a <coughs> Grammy in the box. You know, I'll just pop oh. out and scare the behaviors out of people yeah. and then somebody'll you know, like the whack a mole thing, somebody'll push my head back down mm. and then later on when someone's not suspecting, yeah. I'll just pop back up again and scare them. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I kinda wonder if our third point on this things that turned out to suck ass even qualifies because of the origin of the word. Okay, you ready for this? Okay. okay. We're having a deep, deep dork table today, little Nancy. All kinds of fun shit today. Okay. Politics. Politics. Oh, I thought you were going with money because money oh, is I did. one eye, I, one right. eye. But it doesn't matter which one we use. We're we're going to find the same situation each time. Well, have fun. Politics. Have fun. Politics is poly, which is many, and ticks, which is bloodsuckers. Uh, no. Seriously. No. It is. Uh, okay. I know it is, but it's, it, is, it, is that the origin of those two words? Well, poly comes from the Greek for many, mm-hmm. and ticks yeah. are out in the woods. Because government, <laughs> right, but government has a true Greek uh, origin, I believe. And it's not good. Yeah. It's called mind control, basically. Uh huh. Wow. Hello. And then when you tell people, hey, I need the government, what do they do? They beat you up with more words because you're against their damn word. What's wrong with these people, Mary? I think somebody broke up. Well, mm-hmm. you know, what? lots of people, mm-hmm. lots of people like breaking things because they're broken, mm-hmm. you know, and broken people break things. Well, if you vote for me, who do I have to invade? 
Come on, tell me if who's I, your enemy. If I voted, who would you have to invade? Yeah, to get your vote. Um. Wow. Uh, I have an answer. You've you've already invaded cycles. No, no, I meant like a you know like huh, like a country. Yeah, like that. Something huge. Okay, Denmark. Something huge. Well, I would I would invade Israel. Eh, because that's not a real country. Oh, it don't matter. If you get rid of Israel, the Middle East gets back to what it was doing before that. Israel's the whole fucking problem in the Middle East. Period. Get rid of Israel and everybody goes back to bed. So, no, they want Israel right there where it is, causing all this crap. So these fucking rich people can continue to abuse the poor people. Yeah. And go and grab land and say, hey... I am chosen. This but is mine. The stupidity of politics has got people convinced that a certain class of finance deserves to live in the street in tents. Wow. And that's okay now. That's like normal for people to be outdoors. And wait a minute. Doesn't that strike you as odd? Okay, repeat that again. People living outside, it's part of society now, it's the normal, that there are people living on the street in tents, like Bullwinkle and Rocky. Um, yeah, that is rather odd, especially when you have so many empty residences. Why uh, yeah. can't they just... I think Grim and Moose were talking about that last night, it's probably where it came from, you know, why it's still in my mind. Because you're, you're right, there's plenty of fucking uh, available this, available that, but if it doesn't generate something a certain way, whatever that way is, I don't understand why. If these guys got billions of freaking dollars, why don't they just go in there and find a hundred people and loan them each a million dollars? You know, that would create a freaking economy immediately. Hey, go get some lumber. We're building houses and digging shit and doing this. But you never see any of that. You just see the rich investing into each other and fucking everybody else. And this is okay. This is how we live. Like, it's cool. Well, yeah. Thank you, politics. But why do you have to get money involved in it? I didn't. That wasn't my idea. Well... Yeah, but you said give them all a million dollars and put them in there, and it's like, mm, mm, mm. just let them just let them move in there and tell them you are responsible for the upkeep. See, there you go with the, all that. that. That's the fucking problem. Is at the, the actual sources of what we need to survive are tainted. They're poisoned, and they're second fucking best. You don't get quality input in life. So you're not even capable of fucking making a decision based on that. That's why it's probably so easy to get people to vote. Believe they're part of some group of 60 fucking million. What, what? Who needs that? A brain, a, bra um, a, a brainwashed, a brainwashed, misinformed fool. That's who. That's what I have to say, Miss Mary. <laughs> okay. What? Hmm? Well, you I'm just, prejudiced you, like you, that, though. You had you had to say it, hmm. and now you've said it. So there you go. Yeah, but I really mean it. Well, why bother saying it if you don't mean it? At least on some level. Hmm. Why bother saying it? I don't know. You're asking me too too important of a question. It's too deep for me. Let's get back to politics. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, yeah. See, Let's go back to the shallow end of the G. Exactly. Shall we? Exactly. And that's the truth of the shit that gets everybody's fucking attention. And the things that the they... The shit, as in the floaters. Oh, okay. Like, fuck. How, how far back do you want to go? Oh, I don't know. Vietnam's a good start. That was all a bunch of shit. And yeah. that goes back to 1953 when it was the French in there fighting them for whatever the fuck all that was about. So, yeah, I never really did understand why in the hell we got into that one. Money. I think it well, had yeah. a lot to do with rubber plantations and uh, steel mines. 
Oh. There seemed to be a lot of that rubber plantation stuff going on in that particular area. And steel as well. At the time, they were mining for that shit. So, hmm, what a coincidence that, you know, wherever the need is, you know, whatever resource the United States needs at any given time in history, why, that's where they're fighting a war to free some fucking people. Bring some democracy to them. Man. And, yeah. and for national security. Hmm. And then you get because informed about like something like the economic, economic uh, diary of an economic, uh, economic hitman. It's hard to fucking say. I know. Blah, 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 blah. Here, let me try that one more time. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It is fun to do that. Diary of an economic hitman. Film at 11. How's that? Uh, I forget Sweet. the guy that wrote. He, well, he was actually he was going to foreign countries. And doing the dirty work the government does. And it's not, mm -hmm. to the layman, it's just big business. And to the guy that understands what this fucker's talking about, that's racketeering, blackmail, uh, however many laws you can count to break them all. But they're doing it within the confines of the fucking law. It's, it's most insane shit you ever heard of. If you try to do this, and the government found out about you doing it. They'd lock you up and throw you out forever. But they do this every day, everywhere they go. And they get thanked for doing it. Politics. And you know what? That's that just, just that right there lets you know if you get the whole concept with Black's Law and all that fun shit, hmm. that corporations have been granted personhood, hmm. then there's two different sets of laws for persons or people or whatever. Because big people... Big persons can get away with shit that the little guy can't get away with. So there are two separate sets of laws. But they're still both legal fictions. And once you crack that particular code of the game, it's how to play. A, no matter what game you play, there's always a way to win. Even if it looks like there's no way to win, there's a way to win. You've got to be smart enough to figure out what the damn hole is. Where is that one, one answer? And there's always a, an answer somewhere. And I think the answer is to understand what they're doing and do what they do. Otherwise, don't engage. So, how do you not even engage in a corrupt entity that takes you as a hostage? See, that's kind of tough because that corrupt entity has tainted every part of existence now. So... Well, it's kind of hard to not engage. I've watched a lot of these uh, police things they got on the, uh, what do you call it, Netflix. Oh, fascinating shit. And they mm -hmm. and the police give their self up in ways. Like, uh, they will, they'll, they'll videotape uh, an investigation, and they'll give this guy, they'll question him. They'll interview him, and they'll film the questioning. And they'll get to the point where the guy will... He's not answering any questions. And then they say something arbitrary like, do you want a soda? And he says, yeah. Now they got him saying, yeah. Now they, they uh -huh. got a halt. See, he doesn't know this because he's just responding to, yeah, I'm thirsty. I need something to drink. But they finally crack that first no. And then they start digging at you until you can't. You can't stand against them in their game because you gave in and said yeah to the drink. That opens you up for whatever came after it. Uh-huh. They say... Which could be just matching your fingerprints or it could oh, be please. getting a DNA sample or it could More be nonsense. any other kind of sneaky and covert... Yeah, you buy all that freaking science nonsense when so many guys have ended up in prison because they were convicted by that very shit. And then at 30 years go by and they go, well, you know, we, we got we got the real killer. Huh? Yeah. Wait, but you got my thing. Well, we were wrong. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I, you're wrong once. That's enough for me. Then it's not it's not proof of anything. It's maybe. See? Well, you're wrong once. You learn from it and you try not to do it again. That's. That's a bonus, right? That's not how the government Fact, works, you crazy If you're woman. wrong once and you realize yeah. you're wrong and yeah. you realize you got away with it, yeah. oh, and then you yeah. try it a second time, yeah. 
and you get away with it again, then it becomes company policy. Do you know how many people are in the American penal system at the adult level? No. It's over 2 million. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to challenge 2 million cases of government bullshit? What it would cost to go through each individual case to prove the ones that are bullshit are bullshit. Who could afford that? See, and that's where this whole system is based on money and what you can afford. Right. Well, that's apparently that's what people think is cool. Well, they can think it's cool all they want. Or you're a I communist. Don't... Are you a communist, Miss Mary? You want free no. shit? You want me to go out and sweat so you can have free cable TV? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't really give a fuck. You know, if I choose to go out and work, I don't really give a fuck about the results of the money at the other end. I'm out there working, see? that. They hit you with questions that really don't, there is no way to answer them because you don't really know from any experience what the fuck you're answering. It's just stories and hearsay and TV and movies and friends. But as far as reality, how many people know Donald Trump? I don't. There you go. And it doesn't bother me. I'm just saying, you know, it's his, but everything is so common. Everybody's plugged in and we're all in tune and we all got all the knowledge the fucking universe at our fingertips on a keyboard <sighs> what the only part of the equation that the system won't come out and tell us out loud is we're poisoning you at every level of life we can find we lie to you about everything that's good and make all that stuff against the law we push the poisons down your throat and make them uh Easily accessible and affordable. And the good stuff, we're going to make you sweat to get any of that. Well, you know, that's... I I mean, the government's got the fucking nerve, okay, after all this prohibition against hemp over the years, to come out with new studies indicate not well, we know, we buried the original studies in the 1920s so we could make it illegal and make a ton of money off the ignorance. No, new studies indicate. So now, well, we'll make it legal so you can jump through this hoop and dance to this and we can fuck with the product and see how we could squeeze it for more profit. Yeah, that whole legal schmeagle <sighs> shit. That's where we're at. That's what these idiots want. Profit. They want to sit in a fucking chair and invest money in something else and make money off investing money instead of doing anything. And it's possible. Yeah. I've done my share of it you know, over the life. Well, and that's why I've come to the conclusion that the system is not broken. It's working exactly as it was designed. Mm-hmm. It may be overachieving in some areas, but it's it's doing what <laughs> it was designed to do. What's your favorite area of overachievement? Um, the, I wrote a law and therefore you must obey. Okay. Politics. You know that, yeah. yeah. No, not just politics. I well, mean, it's just this whole law thing. Isn't that politics? It's a law. Wait a minute. Isn't the whole point of law to engage your society in social politics where it's all written down, they can see it for themselves and understand it? That's what I'm talking no, you don't agree? Okay, that may be man's law. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. But natural law, no. Natural oh, law is no. just a given. It's what everybody, you understand. This is how you behave. If you do not wish to be treated a certain way, don't do that to others. I like that. Yeah. That's what I do. Physically, when I'm out there, that's my my stand. Whatever the fuck it is. You don't got to tell anybody. It's like helping Carson when he dropped his money. I could have just stood on that fucking money and waited till he walked off and snatched it. But, you know, it, 
is it worth 400 you know kroner to lose a friend because you, you want to be an idiot it, it's petty so you know my first thing is hey man you dropped your dough grab it <laughs> yeah 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 because uh, i'm just not petty enough to be bothered to, to try to trick somebody out of a few bills they dropped in a grocery store it's beneath me well, it's called being considerate of others. No, it's not enough money to steal. I mean, if I'm going to steal, I want to be fucking stealing something, not 400 kroner off the floor. That that would embarrass me. I'd be ashamed of myself. There you go. See? And yep. that's, that, that's that inner guidance. You don't need the external. I have a piece of paper and I have a pen. I am going to write down something and now you're a criminal. Oh, yeah. See, my inner Jew knows I can fuck your ass up with a pen where you couldn't even think of touching me. Mm. Oh, yeah, the threat. Oh, Mary, just threats in, just verbal threats, financial threats are the most horrible thing you can do to a person, right? And when, it goes back to when I was uh, uh, breaking in to be a phone salesman. And we would have trouble with uh, certain women wouldn't let their bosses talk on the phone. And it would, kind of piss us off so we came up with ways to make sure that we get through to them but some of them were pretty nasty and you get some uh counter woman whatever she's ah we, we're not going to have him talking to you well this is jerry down at the uh you know so-and-so massage parlor and we got a bounce check with his hold on a minute <laughs> Have you ever wondered how that phrase bounce check came around? Well, no, but because I've joked about that at stores. But I you know back when I, I wrote checks I've and had, I dropped it and it didn't bounce and I went, see, it must be good, it didn't bounce. Well, and no, they look at me weird. But I had guys come to the phone screaming at me about I never bounced no fucking a check and no, well, who is this? You know, so you get caught lying, but you prove yourself to be able to get to that guy on the telephone when I was doing it was the goal. See, it wasn't about selling anything. It was about breaking that freaking, that woman was going to outwit you. Yeah. It was always a female, too, in the day. It was never a guy. But it had nothing to do with bouncing checks. <laughs> well, you know, having a battle of wits with an unarmed person can be quite entertaining for a while, but eventually you get tired of it. Are you tired of me already? Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying you're unarmed, oh. but... What? You're not quite Monty Python Black Knight yet. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Can you imagine? Wow, yeah. It's just a scratch. No, it's not. Take your fucking arm off, you dumbass. No, come on and Only fight me. Only a flesh wound. Fight, you coward. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would have been that way like 40 years ago. Now I, I'm a little smarter now. Now it's like, yeah, okay. Here, let me buy you a drink. <laughs> There you go. Ever fall off a bar stool drunk? No. Yes, I have actually. Most a people, long time ago. Most people that do didn't know they had help. <laughs> Alcohol is the greatest way to take your aggravation out on others and get away with it. You know, because oh, we yeah. were out drinking, man, and he just fucking fell. <laughs> well, yeah. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Alcohol is also one of those things that makes you think you're the funniest person in the world and the best singer and the best dancer as well. Politics. Oh, wait. No, wait. Religion. You just took me to religion. Uh, <laughs> isn't, al yeah, isn't alcohol a religion? Uh, you can have a religious experience with it. That's why it's called spirits. Okay, but name one, one single good thing that, well, see, it always goes with excess. You can drink alcohol moderately and get a physical benefit from it. But most yes. people, uh, most people when they do, they either don't like the taste of alcohol and they won't do it, or they don't give a flying fuck about the taste and they like the alcohol and they overdo it. Get one uh -huh. or the other. So, yeah. Well, because, yeah, I've read a shot of whiskey a day is good for the the internal system. Shot of vodka. Oh, that's it, right. Well, I personally, I have a real problem with the, the clear uh, 
alcohols. They just do a number on my brain. See, I know other people like that as well. I can't do, I can't do like whiskey, rum, hmm. that kind of stuff. Oh, well, figures. That See? just rips my guts up. Oh, uh, well. Now, is this another religion, this alcohol thing, or is this just a passing fancy? You ever notice that it's in all that damn Bible stuff too about wine drinking the wine? I don't remember anybody telling me much about smoking the reefer though, but it must be in there somewhere. I mean, it's not like they just found out about weed last, you know, the last century. No, this shit's been around for thousands of years. I'll bet you Jesus smoked weed. If I'll in bet fact he there his was, own. yeah, if in fact there was a Jesus, his time. You know what I did see a while back was a parallel with kingdoms and historical value to the biblical story. You know where yeah. in that time frame in actual physical proven history. There were actual kingdoms and so and so, but in the Bible they're called something different. But they parallel things that supposedly by this other source truly happened. So, hmm, you know, every time I think I know something, I read and then I go, oh, I wonder if that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, and I'd listened uh, to a video some some gentleman that was going through a lot of that stuff. Hmm. And said that there was an actual person that the Jesus personality was built upon, but the, and this person was a Persian prince. Still conjecture or see what physical. That's a, here's my problem with proof, right? It, you can only go so, back so many hundred years before you're just relying on other people's written word. There is. I, mean, you, I don't think you can even go back just a few hundred years. I think you need to, you know, once you get to a certain point, you mm. just kind of go, mm. You mean like okay. you don't think George don't, Washington had never told the lie? You know, there's an awful lot of things in his story <laughs> that I really, I don't have a flipping clue what the hell they're talking about. Because, <laughs> and, and I seriously, I can't, there's a lot of things I just plain cannot, yeah, cannot go there. I got you. I, I don't doubt what you're saying, dear. No, no, no. I'm laughing out of that nervous. Oh boy, do I get that. But hmm. so I mean about it. it's subjective for me. So I don't, I don't have an objective thinking brain. Kills me when I play uh, what you call it uh, trivia with uh, Sundays on the RLM because yeah. my fingers, my brain's quick as fuck, but my fingers to type. Nah, I never took the type time to teach my you know self to type without looking and do it quickly and uh, accurately and all that. So I type heck pen you know pen peck. What do you call that? Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. pecking. And it, it slows me down, but the answers are still there. And, yeah. and then there's a lot of times where four of us will answer it in the same second, but, you know, like two seconds, two tenths a second apart. So the, the games, we're in that 20, 21st century, so the game's accurate. It goes to the clock, and it gives the right. You know. <laughs> wow, how did we get here? Hmm? Uh, um. We mm. got here by design. I'll guarantee you that. We're, oh, we're yeah. not victims of some happenstance. Oh, something went wrong. What the fuck? Everything that we're doing today is expected of us to do. Each of us who's doing it, whatever it is. Yeah, it's all part of that system. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to be able to be part of that system, you have to do... Yeah, and even resistance and, find roles. and and my act is resistance verbally to that system. And I'm just as much of a, a component of it as the guy that they're using to enhance it. I'm a necessary part of it to make it look real. If I don't believe it, then what are you going to do? Come on. Yeah. Well, right, but you we know don't what? You see was, that. You were talking right. about religion, yeah. and oh, I yeah. run across a meme, and I just found it again. i got to read you this shit. Cause post this... it, baby, post it. Well, yeah. I think okay. I have posted it a few places, oh, but okay. I don't know if I posted it in the RLM. Maybe I'll have to put it on realliberty.org, and then 
because oh. I had to download it. Oh. In any case, it's uh, the Bible was written and then rewritten and then edited and then re-edited, <laughs> then translated from dead languages, then re-re-translated <laughs> and re-edited again, then re-re-re-edited, then re-translated and then given to kings for them to take their favorite parts out, and then re-edited and re-translated and given to the Pope for him to approve, and then re-edited and rewritten, all based on stories that were told orally 30 to 90 years after they had happened to people we didn't know how, or people who didn't know how to write. And I guess what I'm trying to say is the Bible is literally the world's oldest game of telephone. Yeah, I found, I saw that today. I think. I yeah, thought, I probably wow. shared it. Well, somewhere still, it went. it's brilliant. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. But how many people understand that? Because they truly believe they've been beaten their whole life to believe this book is the word of a supreme being. Well, then and how every come? Every time, it's, I, yeah. How every come, time I talk to someone like that, I tell them, okay. Stop and think of how wonderful cell phone signals are right now and how iffy they can be. And you really, honest to God, if you if some guy was standing out on a street corner in a sheet yeah. and placards front and back, would you go over and talk to him? Because it's the word of God. Gideon's Bible. Yeah. You no, know, who made money off all that? I wonder. You know, oh, man. See, and then money isn't even, it's not what we think it truly is. It's really just an accounting scheme, money. It, if you can get the zeros at the end of the right number and match a name to it, ding, you get to play. And if you don't, you get to work. Mm -hmm. Well, see, some people think that, like, there's uh, different values have status. Oh, Christ. And I thought that America, the idea of the United States was to get away from all that shit, that shitty living of competition. And I'm better than you because I'm from this country and you're not that good because you're from that country and all that shit. Right. And all mm -hmm. men were created equal, except for the niggers that do this work, and the Mexicans that do that work. And those uh, t the Irish over there that are slaves. No, the fuck them. But these other people, they're all, they're free. And this is what I read when I see all this crap, in these documents. Oh, the Constitution. And, you know, as far as I can tell from what I've acquired as far as looking at this over my lifetime, I never signed anything willingly. I was never offered a fucking opportunity to not do anything. I was forced through trickery and deceit to go along with his bullshit until I realized that's what I was doing. So I can blame the game all day and night, but it's not the game. It was me playing the game. As soon as I realized there was a game to not play, I stopped playing. Hey, I'm getting out of this. And it did. Mm -hmm. Whoa, not an easy task. I'll tell you, well, it was easier in my day than it would be now. If I was to start now, where I started in the, in the mid, late 80s, 87, 88, right in there, it would be a different whole thing. The outcome couldn't possibly be the same. I had advantages. Yeah. Like the population was tilted more towards sane than insane when I was in my 20s. Today, I think Not about so much. 9 out of 10 of you people are... Off your fucking meds. That's what I think. If you want to know the truth, you're, uh, no. Uh, I, I think the the results of today are actually through the sources of food, water, and electricity, and they keep us how we are, whatever we are to each other. This is a byproduct of society. Without society, we'd get along just fine. Yeah. I prove it every freaking day when I go into town. Well, you know what? Hmm. Tuesday we're going to have to, because I don't have my book close to me. Hmm. Tuesday we're going to have to go over some stuff that I just read in my 
in the latest Ringing Cedars book that I'm reading. Mm, And I tell you what, if that ain't a good explanation for Uh, how we got where we're at. Today. Oh, you have a plan for Tuesday night on Saturday. I know, it's kind of scary. Who the hell are you? What'd you do with Miss Mary, you weirdo? I know. I'm used to the one that... Yeah. And replace my aliens. I'm telling you, the only plans you've made with me for the last two years has been, well, I'm going to go see my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're planning to do a Tuesday show on a show. Oh, yeah. I, I'm flattered, Miss Mary. I, I, oh, I'm going to get all weepy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got. Uh, so let's go into your personal favorite. We We're halfway through the show here. And Mm -hmm. the next little ditty we came up on our list of seven things that turned out to suck ass. Medicine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And all, and each and every tentacle attached to this monster is lethal. And they're disguised as hell. And it's really, it's a soft sell. And, well, it makes sense if you're indoctrinated to believe it. And if you're told the truth about what they're, you know, telling you, then you come out of it with quite a different outlook. And I thought Mary would really like this topic. Well, Mm -hmm. I tell you what. um, I'd listened to the latest video on Highwire. Del, Del Big Tree, is that his name? I don't know. Um, in any case. Do you have a link? Was, uh, I can always add a link to the notes. Just a minute and I will Ooh, find it. Oops. That way they'll have a reference to whom you speak of if you want it in there. It's up to you because today <laughs> we are blaming the evil for all our bad ideas. Blame evil. Evil is your enemy. <laughs> yeah, Del Big Tree. Um, okay. She found it, folks. I'm done yep. stalling. Who's lying to you? Ooh, give me a and copy it, on it's that. Kinda, that one. It's kind of not exactly real easy. I tried not to watch because it's like a God's, the old Japanese Godzilla movies. <laughs> the audio is not synced up with the video. And <laughs> that maybe that's <laughs> just <laughs> with me with my crappy internet. But um, in this, I mean, he's he cuts to um, video of uh, the World Health Organization in a meeting of the minds, all of these really smart people, educated people on ice kind of thing. And um, they are talking about um, the lack of people buying into – the whole vaccine thing. And, you know, these are all these medical professionals. And they've even got the gal from who's the head of the FDA who has a German accent. Hmm. That concerns me just a skosh. I don't know <laughs> if it's like a subliminal thing or what. But in any case, they're talking about how they're going to have to start doing some safety studies. So they actually admit that they have done no safety studies on these things, Mm -hmm. and they have to come up with some kind of way to take these safety studies and convince people that, yes, you need to still let us shoot you up. Mm -hmm. And it's it's two hours and nine minutes, but wow, is it full of information that just all kinds of little bombs get dropped all through that, and you go, holy crap. These people and and I actually commented on the um, um, video and got someone liked my comment even. Um, my comment was after listening to the so-called authorities and their talking points, it makes me think of a bunch of politicians discussing how to put out a fire after the barn has already burned down and all of the livestock was locked inside. This is what happens. When you let overly educated egos be in charge. Ooh. So I've Aren't got two so. likes already. Well, there you go. But, yeah, but which, you know, you know that, many... it doesn't make any difference. If I feel motivated enough to, 
to comment, then I'm motivated enough to comment, whether someone likes it or not. But I All thought right. it was kind of cool All that right. I actually well, well, got wait. two likes out of that. Wait, Mary, how many un-egomaniac people are going to ever go into politics in the first place? See, well, it's that's a, true. It's a catch-22, right? What the, the way this should be done is by not – not by somebody wanting to be promoted, but by somebody that doesn't want to be promoted. You yeah. should be forced to do it for the good of everybody else for free for two years and then you're done. And you can't earn any fucking profit while you're holding that position. You do everything for the people for two years. All your needs are met, but you cannot earn any money while you're in servitude to the state. I'll bet that would change the whole fucking game. You get better players, too. Oh, yeah. You want to make money outside, get out of politics. You want to make money outside. You want to you know, help the people, politics. But, see, that's not what we were raised. We were raised like some kind of a mutant fucking Ferengis. Everything's got to profit. And everything's got to cost less and be better than. What the fuck? Are you crazy? We have new and improved, and the only thing that's new and improved is the packaging. And it's not necessarily improved; it's harder to get into. But it's poisoned and it's colorful and all that. But don't let your kids yeah. eat it. Your kid will end up in the fucking infirmary with a stomach problem if it eats the label off the damn soapbox. So you know they make it all bright colors, so little kids will try to put it in their mouth because it's what little kids do. Yeah, you, you know these people aren't stupid. All this labeling and packaging to attract certain kinds of people to it works. You know who it don't work on? Mm-mm. Me. You know what I've done? What? I've resorted to having to write down a list. And you know, and my now the last, the last thing I did today, <laughs> I was supposed to get something and I got distracted and forgot I had to get something between looking at it and putting it in my pocket and talking to somebody. Just boom, like that. Because, you know, squirrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know how that squirrel works. Well, yeah, but see, old age has brought me all these gifts I didn't have when I was young. Yeah, like the gift of forgettery. Yeah, when I was young, I could be stoned or whatever, not paying attention and remember what you wanted from the freaking store. Ride a bike down there and bring it back, riding a bike and holding a bag. And now... I, I can't remember with a note. <laughs> it's priceless. You can't pay for this kind of entertainment. It's very expensive. Ah. Yeah. But it's all part of my grandmaster plan for global dominance. Ah, uh, you're going to dominate a globe, huh? Why not? If Trump can do it, I can do it. Who the fuck is Trump? He's just some guy with bad hair. <laughs> they did a meme of Orange him. man, bad. Oh, God. They did a meme of his hair with a... The comparison was the ear of corn. <laughs> oh, Dude. good Lord. Where the, you know that yellow shit off the husk of the corn is Yeah, blowing. the silk. Yeah, well, they got Trump in one of those windy moments where his, his dew is kind of flopping around like... It looked like the top of the ear of corn. <laughs> oh! It, it's not a... He's not a flattering leader, people. I mean, you know, damn. Wow. <sighs> I don't know. I guess he's a step down from Obama. At least Obama could wear a suit and, you know, looks normal to a point. Trump can't even try. <laughs> I don't think Trump knows what normal is. Normal's a setting on a dryer. Exactly. Duh. But if he could be normal for five fucking minutes. Uh, uh, Does, I don't think anybody should be normal. Well, yeah, but see, he's the face of your cunt tree. And, you know, when you got the face of your cunt tree uh, posting tweets on Twitter like a 15-year-old girl... You know, and the people all over the world see this. You know what happens? <laughs> what happens? It kind of makes your your POTUS look stupid. Is what it does. It cheapens office. How how can someone else make the POTUS look stupid? I thought that was just too much. His... <laughs> 
I mean, seriously, <laughs> well, how, can, circum- how can anything make a person look stupid? <laughs> Only their actions make them look stupid. Well, I don't know. Obama did a good job with some people. They they bought and sold, you know, they're bought and sold that good suit God. and tie, smiley. If Obama clean did not shit. have a freaking yeah. um, teleprompter in front of him, oh, he couldn't talk for shit. No, Porky Pig that. Yeah. was more <laughs> eloquent. <laughs> I know. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> See why I rarely waste my time on nice cities. They always get shot in the fucking head anyway. The truth is always more entertaining. But if I would have come out and said, Obama talked like a blithering idiot, then you would have said, no, he didn't. He was a rather eloquent man. Yeah, he did. Oh, shit. <laughs> medicine, Mary. Okay, I hit you so hard with the medicine to change topics on. You want to skip to the other one? And so, well, no, we can go back to the medicine thing. Jeez. Yeah, you know, you got your, you had your medicine man way back in the day. You mm. know, the guy that would go out and gather the herbs and mm. bring them around. And now you have a medicine man where he wears a white coat and you go into a building and he dispenses these lovely little pills. That's pretty much where it's gone. You know, from, it's, it's gone from, Having delivered right to your home, kind of like Amazon before Amazon was around, to having to go and get your poison and pay out the ass for it. Mm, talk about progress. Yeah, medicine, mm, no, no. If I have to go somewhere to be poisoned, thank you, no, I'll just stay home. I can, I can do that shit myself here at home. Hmm. Go out and eat the lawn or something, well, I don't know. From From the reading... From the reading that I have found, what happened is these big, big wealthy families decided to invest in the new, upcoming, improved medical business that was on the you know horizon. But they had to squash the the one that worked before it and create a future full of people that would use their product. And took me until I was 50 fucking four to really understand that's what happened. And so I got tricked into believing I was ill so that I would take a pill that actually made me sick in another area and did absolutely nothing for what they claimed it did. So, hmm, my experience is mine, not everybody else's. Again. See, and, and I actually did some research on this because... Mm-hmm. Papa John Rockefeller um, actually started out as a snake oil salesman, and he did not do well at it. Matter of fact, everybody said, no, this is bullshit. This is poison that you're selling. And um, all during this time frame, he was out here in the Western territories, you know, Kansas and Colorado and kind of kicking around out here. And some, I don't remember the exact how it happened, but he wound up getting some kind of financial backing, and then he wound up being like a mayor or some such nonsense, or a boss in a mine. He wound up being a total dickweed is what he was, um, which, okay, he started out being that in the first place, but he really started pushing his weight around out in Colorado in the mining area and uh, killed off a lot of people. And then he decided to take his game on the road, and he moved back east with his ill-gotten gains and decided, I'm going to start a medical system that will, you know, I will be able to profit off of. And and when you look at the progression, he started doing the whole um, allopathic, I think is what they call it, medical system. And he got with Carnegie, with, you know, the Carnegie Library and all that fun shit. But between those two, they started working on, let's write the books that the doctors learn from. Mm -hmm. And so, really, it was Rockefeller that started this whole modern medicine. Because when you look at it now, um, all of the books that they learn from... Are written by, yes. Yes. 
but and most folks it's don't only even... accepted teachings and yeah. most of them a lot of doctors will tell you we had maybe maybe at max three credit hours if that much now, most you, of them will say we Mary, got a half an hour but three your, credit hours of anything Mary, on vaccine and nutrition all right do any but, of your family members know what you just spoke out loud are they seriously my aware does. of my mom does okay w- what's the response from them about it actually mom knew about it before me she's the one that gave me the book then why is she getting um manipulated by the other folks in the situation hmm. um i can only remember they, when they it caught, was me. they caught her in a weak moment yeah yeah. You know, when she had lots of stress going on, and they said, we can help you with oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the time, yeah, I can see where I got trapped, hindsight. But when it was happening, I had no clue. I was that unaware of it because I was convinced I was ill. See? And then once yeah. I realized, oh, there ain't nothing fucking wrong. I, wait a minute. I'm being tricked. So, you know, whatever the mind believes, the mind makes true. I could go the other fucking way and be a hypochondriac instead of whatever the opposite of a hypochondriac is where I'm like, not Jack Lane or any of that horse shit, but I can, you know, meander around and fend for myself for the most part. You know, you're saying whatever the mind believes is what is true. Yeah. And that reminded yeah. me of a link that I was kind of sort of getting ready to read over on Minds. And so I just put it in the... um Chit chat. Oh, okay. All is mine. All is mine. Okay. Yes. You want the me to throw that in the cognitive notes? Cognitive biases. Okay, I'll throw it in the notes then. Okay. I was just double so, checking with you, Bosco. You got to let me talk to you sometimes. Just not. I'm not going to talk long. Just wanted to ask. You big I know. Bully. You big old bully head. Uh, I know I am a big old bully head, but, but it's one of those forgettery things that's really kicking in, and squirrel. I think it's the frequencies and shit that's going on around here. If I don't, you know, if something triggers a memory and I got I got to get it out or uh, it's gone. Oh, okay. Yeah. We call that anal retention, but that's okay. You can call it what you like. Uh, I call it forgettery. It's a, free wor- it's a free world here. You can do whatever you can live with. But, I will call it doorways from now, now on. Oddly enough, though, medicine and belief systems, again, both the kind of rub shoulders there. Well, you got to have one to have the other. You can't do oh, that. Yeah. It seems, seems like you can't do medicine without some kind of belief system that it's real. It, once I stepped away from that, it's real thing and saw what I saw, it was easier for me to just, ah, fuck it. But if I was tied to it, I don't, I don't know what I would have done. See, without the internet to throw the information at me the way it did, I don't know if I'd ever seen it. Hmm. It's hard to explain, you know, the right moment where you look at something and see what it is. Does It's not a constant thing. Life is vibrating and moving. And things seem like they're staying stationary, but they're not. They just look like they are. I don't see the growth every day from my plants, but I know it is maybe week to month or week to two weeks, and I'll go, wow, you grew another leaf. Wow. Mm-hmm. But daily, I look at them, and I just, they just look like the same plants. But when I step back and think, oh, what was that last week? Oh, yeah, there's a new this and a new that. So... The immediate right now is so fast. I can't keep up with it. I got to slow down and take a good long look like a dumb human. Hmm. Well, like a dumb human, huh? It's either that or be a, a dumb legal fiction in an admiralty court. So I'm going to choose going the, going the human way and being an animal. Fuck them. Do not understand. There you go. Because what understand means and what we've trained to believe it means are two different things. You don't want to yeah. understand in a fucking admiralty court. That's what they no. want you to do. And so, no, you don't even want to plead. You don't even want to be there. It's so complicated. How do you disengage from this potential beast that could just destroy your whole fucking life in one day with a stroke of a pen and you don't even know it's there? 
because you live a good life, so you don't expect to see this ever happen. But it, it does. And it happens to whoever it happens to. It almost seems random. Like they just, whoever's in the way gets slapped. doesn't matter who you are. You don't, you don't see what I mean? I'm like, people are all about karma and all that kind of, I don't think there's no such thing as karma. Karma is a, it's a way you look at something because there are thousands of things I got away with doing in life that nobody ever caught me doing. But then there's a handful of things I got accused of doing I never did. But I got punished for doing those things because I couldn't prove I didn't do them. See? See, and I think karma is a self-imposed thing. Uh, but you have your the beauty of life. You have the way you look at it. And we both have the same equally fucked up language to do our deciphering with. So, hmm. I think in a way we're both at the same deficit, so it's a fair game. You know, if you come out of this English crap, and you've got two functioning brain cells, and you come up with, we're being fucking lied to by these leaders and these religious people, these damn teachers. <laughs> and you come out of it, and you go, hey, I'm not as fucked up as they told me I was, am I? <laughs> the dork yeah. table. Hey, I never wanted to sit at the cool kids' table anyway. Those people made me nervous. Ugh. All that smiling. Uh, I had more fun over in the dork table and laughing at the cool kids and going, yeah, they think they're cool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you sick little woman, you. <laughs> I know. Well, you want to know how sick I am? Yeah. I have people send me links all the time, and I just got a link. Okay. You want to tell me? Well, it's not a link, but it's Absolutely. a joke. Absolutely. Okay. A cardiologist died and was given an elaborate funeral. A huge heart covered in flowers stood behind the casket during the service. Following the eulogy, the heart opened and the casket rolled inside. The beautiful heart then closed, sealing the doctor inside forever. At that point, one of the mourners burst into laughter. When all eyes stared at him, he said, I'm sorry. I was just thinking of my own funeral. I'm a gynecologist. Huh. It was at that point that the proctologist fainted. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the end of that before. Proctology and you. Miss Mary, what are we going to do with you? Um, I don't know. Just leave me go feral, because well, that's pretty well, much what I am. I'm feral. <laughs> me and Sir came up with a, a villain character. You came up with a name. I should like to come up with a drawing to suit it. The proctologist. He's been protecting assholes since the beginning of time. I I think the proctologist's face should look like a couple of butt cheeks that are spread out. <laughs> South Park. See, it's all been done. That's the problem with creativity is there's so little to do and so well, many you know, people. Nothing, nothing new under the sun. No, but there's so many talented people out there doing shit that. It's, you're just part of the machine, no matter where your talent level's at now. I mean, crying out loud, I've seen 14-year-old girls that can play as good as Eddie. So, mm, that, you know, the gimmickry thing is, it's played out. Things are, uh, they're not art, they're gimmicks. Mm -hmm. A true artist, you can't teach other people to do, like, uh, true art, like painting or playing music, whatever it is. But you can teach people gimmicks where they can seem like they are, but they're really not. You, the, uh, my, my outlook on life about how the illusion is. You know, okay. belief mm -hmm. systems. If I believe something is true, then it's true. If I don't believe that something is true, then it's a lie. There, Who's there to decide but me? You? <laughs> I'm going to let Mary make all my decisions in my life, and I'm going to do it exactly she says. <laughs> right? I mean, is that not what people seem to portray to each other? I can't think for myself. I have to have the approval of my friends and relatives. That's why I'm on Facebook. There you go. There you go. 
I can't think for myself and make a decision that for that regarding my own life. Therefore, I have politicians. I have a representative who's going to present my case for me. Yeah, well, right. okay, but then you trust these people, and then you have things like forced inoculation. So, yeah. but see, whose side does that prove? The voter? Who's right in this case? The one that's against being forced to do something, or the one that wants to force you for the good of all his motherfucking friends? See, it's catch-22. No 100% is going to ever come out of this. Got nothing but divide and conquer. So, instead of telling you what the truth is about the problem, they bullshit you with the side effects of the problem. <laughs> well, they yeah. make it complicated. Yeah, when it's you know, really it's not. It's just too yeah. complicated. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. understand. Oh, yeah. That's why you have me. Oh, you're really? good with the computer. Bring up a link of uh, the insert to a uh, an inoculation for a six-month-old child and read the fucking ingredients on it. You put, you can't put any of this shit in a human being. It's, 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 it's damaging. Damaging and devastating and sometimes lethal. And they're doing it on purpose and getting away with yeah. it. Yeah. If that was a spill in the environment, <sighs> the EPA would Clean be there up, with yeah. hazmat suits and... But it's okay to put five times that much into an infant. A nine-pound fucking human being. Are you out of your fucking mind? Okay, but, see, that's me. I'm uneducated. I don't have a PhD from some university to argue against the principle of inoculating a fucking child. So, guess who gets taken seriously? The idiot that tells the fucking story that's got the little label after his name. And... These people got prices. They're in this game for fucking profit. How do you trust them? Why would you trust with the results that you have of all these lawsuits that did go through and did get judgments against them? How could you possibly not see you being poisoned and say, stop it now? Quit. Oh, that was another one of those things in that high, um, high wire video was they said you really need to stop calling them anti-vaxxers because you're alienating them. If you truly wish to win them over to the dark side, you need to stop calling them anti-vaxxers because that's mean. That's mean language, and you will you will disenfranchise them. Disenfranchise them. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it just goes to show that we're just cattle. You know? We move this around like stock in a fucking yard. Oh, yeah. They control the fuel. They control the food. They control the water. Make us fight amongst our, our you know, our peers for social, what, uh, acceptance, to get ahead yeah. in life. All these things that they're fights. They're encouraged to be fights. Fight for your job. Fight for your country. Fight. Fuck you and your fucking whole game is what I said. You know what they told me? What'd they tell you? Not a fucking thing. You know why? Why? Because the state is a fiction. You, there's no such thing as state. It's all it's all made up. Bunch of crap. If you well, don't engage it, right, well, we're talking on a show that where a lot of people would probably turn it off because we're talking like this. <laughs> 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 we're the French sweetheart, me and you. I'm telling you, we're so far out from. What average Joe believes, it's not real. It's almost insulting. It's like, well, we don't got a lot of people listening. Well, that's because there's not a lot of people out there that understand. They're still hopeful that the state's going to fix shit. They don't know the state broke it. <laughs> Without the state, you wouldn't have any of this problem at all in the first place. Yeah. If anything, the bigger the state got, the tighter the chain around your throat. Now look, <coughs> you know, there's a, a constitution-free zone <coughs> at the border of the United States. <coughs> oh, it's a constitution. So the constitution is free to them? See, <laughs> well, you're making fun. You don't, don't, don't punk me. She's punking me <laughs> on the dark table. I'm getting punked by Miss Mary. Yeah, uh, this is how they justify this crap they do, you know, looking for illegal aliens in your car. 
you know. I smell beaners. Open up. Let me search your car. Yeah, but see, my generation, the people I grew up with, they're all, most of them are gone now. But they didn't raise me to to, uh, lay down and, you know, turn up my throat. So it's a damn good thing I'm not home. I probably wouldn't last a day out there. You know, if it's that intrusive with the searches and the stoppings, I'd be pulled over and that would be that. Fuck you. What do you fucking want? You're going to jail, you smart-ass motherfucker. See, because got no, uh, what do you call that? Hmm. Not afraid of it, I, and I don't have any respect for it, so I can't control myself around it. I treat it how it treats me. And the ones here treat me just fine. Well, there you go. Absolutely. And in Scotland, same thing. In England, same thing. One night, I was out drinking and doing this nasty drugs thing. Well, so I'm 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to this after-hour club. But I had to stop because I was getting ill. Throw it up in the trash can, luckily. And it, just as I'm getting all done with my little episode, two cops come walking up and they say to me, are you having an old good evening, sir? And I said, oh, yeah, I'm doing fine. Just feel a little upset. And they passed me on. Let, let me go. Instead mm-hmm. of jacking me up, let me see some ID. And uh, what have you been smoking or drinking? None of that shit. Just, I seemed like I could walk and, you know, I was talking. So that was enough. They didn't have time to be fucking around bothering some poor tourist or whatever I was to them at the time. But in the States, man, I... The memories of being young, growing up with our police. Who? How mean. What the nasty pricks these guys are. Well, and that's all part of that little word game of going from a peace officer to a police officer to a law enforcement <laughs> officer. Well, yeah, and then you know all the definitions, too. Cool. Yeah. Well, I have life experience with human beings that had jobs. One or two adults in my life were police that I know knew when I was young. Mm-hmm. And the stuff that these people did was illegal. And they weren't shy about it. It wasn't like they were running around the neighborhood telling every, every stranger. But if you were in their house and you had their you know trust at that level, they didn't care what you heard. And I heard some terrible things about drugs. Pot. You know, and I know a, that demon weed. And this guy is a freaking cop and he's sitting there smoking pot in his living room. Egad. With minors and, present, too. I mean, the whole thing could have blown up at the time. Probably got him in all kinds of freaking trouble. But, you know, the cops covered the cops. So we didn't know that at the time. This a, I was young. I was 14. But it took me a while to catch on to what the fuck's going on around you. When grown-ups are doing something and you're still young, your mind isn't really quite sucking it all in the right way yet. You're seeing it from a child's perspective. And so when you get a little older, you look back and you go, oh, wow, that's what they were doing. Yeah. Mm. Well, smoking pot when you're 14 isn't what, when I was growing up, wasn't average. I was still on the fringe. It wasn't the most popular thing to do. You know, there wasn't like groups, hey, let's go join the I Smoke Weed after, you know, science class group. Nothing like that. I'm I'm responding to the dork cakes over here in the chat. Hey, Sorry. Mental not some hey, somebody has to handle the chat. You know I can't handle the chat. I was just reminiscing about when I was a troublemaking little brat smoking pot. You know what he put in the in the chat? He said mm. his daughter was born at home, never ever been to a doctor, no shots, nada. There you go. She's a beautiful girl, See? soon to be twenty one, mm. bright and alive and healthy. Mm. You know, That's awesome. Do you know, I read about, plus, I, I spent time with nurses talking to them about their side of doctors. So I got a little input from women that most guys probably wouldn't hear. And that was this. Those, most of these doctors don't know their ass from their elbow and are lost without the nurses. Yeah. 
It's actually the nurse that does, the doctor might perform a task, but he doesn't really know what goes all into getting all that shit ready for him to do it. He just expects it to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well, that, you know, that's like the guy that takes his BMW to the mechanic to fix it. Who's smart now? The guy with the car that had the money to buy it or the guy that knows how to fix it? So, you know, we, we're we not taught to balance anything. It's always, this guy is always right and this guy is always wrong. Instead of, hey, you ever look at it from this particular spot? It looks a little different. Yeah. Well, that's what I get from you, you know. You don't have to agree with Mary all the time. Sometimes it's not so hard to stand over where she's looking from and take a look from there. That's the way I see it. Not that you're trying to convince me of anything. You've never done that. We've been well, disagreed over the years about a lot of shit, but you've never gone, eh, but if you don't listen to me, you're wrong. Nah, none of that nonsense. Yeah, well... You know, I've I learned a long time ago that you can't convince people, you can't can't change people. All mm-hmm. you can do is do your own thing and people will either imitate what you're doing or ignore your ass. One of the two. Then you or know, yell at you. Are you capable of defining your own belief system? Have you ever Not really, really given see me I think I can. I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that I'm in a uh, aware enough at the moment to really know that. No, I I'm deciding here. See, and I don't know that I necessarily have a belief system. Well, that's how simple mine is. I I made it so number one. It's my belief. Believe me, you can you not debate me. You don't tell me what to believe. Ugh. That that simple, that childish is I'll just believe whatever I like. And as time is proven, if if it's not true and I believe it, it's still true to me. Doesn't matter what you think. No. Hmm. Take religion as a perfect example. If I was a Mormon and I believed in all that Mormon stuff, how the hell are you ever gonna change my mind if I believe it? You can't. Hey, Wayne, there's no way in this world you're ever going to because I've made up my mind and that's how we are. Mm-hmm. And then some people, maybe that's not how everybody be. Hmm. But see, I think my belief system operates that simply. I believe it. I don't believe it. Two choices. Don't get complicated and start thinking and fuck it all up. Do it easy. Just how you feel about something. And I tie that into belief. If I feel right, then I believe it. If I don't feel right, I don't believe it. It's fraud. Get away from me. Leave me alone. There you go. And, man, it works. Sometimes it works too good. How can some, well, no, I guess things can work too good. They they work better than you anticipated. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, I enjoy the privacy of being able to go out in public and uh, have a beer in privacy in a public setting. And there's certain times around certain people where I don't get that privacy anymore because they've become uh, friendly. Hmm. Well, right. When you're not friendly with each other, then you have that freedom of being anonymous. The minute you know somebody's name, oh, then all of a sudden it changes the whole shit. Everything moves. And you've given up your anonymity to have that privacy. There you go. Not a lot of people want that. Some people go out in public to be social, not to enjoy the privacy available in social settings. I don't always enjoy talking to other people when I go out. Sometimes I like to sit off by myself and just watch them all fight. Stay the fuck out of it. It's not my problem anyway. That kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, what comes of alcohol? Disagreement, gambling, uh, trying to get fucked. Simple things. The, the basic, the, the dirty, nasty side of humanity comes out of this when we drink. 
You know what happens when you smoke weed? Uh, you get most people get mellow. All I, people. I've never in my life have I ever seen anybody smoke weed and then get mad. I've seen them mad and smoke weed and stop being mad, but I've never seen it the other way around. Well, okay, I've seen them get get a little bit on the upset side. I can't say mad, but mm-hmm. get a little on the upset side when somebody ate all the Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Selfishness, yeah, okay. That that's an individual that's an individual weakness though. It's crazy how it works sometimes, mm. but yeah. But of all the things in life to be mad about Oh man, you ate all the Doritos instead of Yeah, but you know, that was way back in the day when yeah. you didn't have twenty four hour places that you could just run down to the corner and get some more. Which, you know, back in those days if you were stoned and you wanted to run down to the corner store and get some more then halfway to the corner store you forgot what the hell you were doing it's about it's about a two mile walk to the place that's open 24 hours in this area and there's only i think one it's a 7-eleven i think 7-eleven gas station and it's on the main on on a main artery that flows through so it's down the roadways Nine miles away, I can go to some place that's open till midnight, and 25 miles away, I can go to some place that's mm. open 24 hours a day. Hey, mental. Yeah, but you know, see, when uh, when me and Cert got together, I guess, created this kind of third person between the two of us that wanted this rural, quiet bullshit. It wouldn't mm-hmm. happen. I uh, wouldn't happen if the two of us hadn't met. Probably life would have just been cities. I think. I don't think she would have found a reason to come out here. This is because of me bitching, you know. So, wow, what luck that, you know, she could listen to a Jew whine without getting upset about it. (laughs) There you go. Well, the way I say things, it's kind of Jew whining. Like, you know, in 10 years, this place is going to look just like fucking L.A. And if you hear that in the right right moment, the right and the right pitch and everything all the setting is perfect and you agree with it, then the next move is kinda obvious. Yeah. Right. Well I didn't know that's what I was doing when it happened. But hindsight, you know, you get you get past beyond well, we're kinda of coming up on six years now. So Well you get all kinds of insights from hindsight. Exactly so. well, see you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. There you go. And I think that the mistakes, the huge boo-boos that I've encountered in life, I've done them all, so I know what they are. And I just don't do them now. Because I've done that, and there's no surprise to it. I know if I do that, this is going to happen. Cause and effect. But when you're, you know, when you're 20, I don't think that your mind is capable of being concerned with cause and effect yet. <laughs> that's just, that's for grown-ups, you know. Yeah. If you're even aware of cause and effect or critical mass, there's another beauty to look forward to. Yeah. When is this freaking uh, here? We're going to go into energy sources. When is this freaking financial system going to collapse due to just the weight of the debt? (laughs) Energy. There's our energy, the main hub of everything. The financial source that we use. And what are we going to do if it collapses? And nobody talks about this. And I don't mean we're going to be, you know, I don't really come from that land of, oh, preparation. I think that things that just get small and small areas will just self-sustain. Yeah. Well, it's... I mean, if, how are you going to take 7 million people in New York? Are you going to fight everybody in Kansas? No. You, how are you going to move the 7 million people? You can't. So what you're going to have is collapses in big areas where there's too many people, and everybody else is just going to settle down and fucking get centralized wherever they are, try to stay small. It'll be the opposite of what we've been through to this point. That's why I said I don't know how they're going to do this, but I see it happening slowly can't decipher it where other people will go yeah i know what you're talking about because this is my you know my vision of what i'm seeing 
and mine's a little different than most people. <laughs> yeah. The gloomers and the doomers and the warmongers, and the climate changers, and all those people that think chemtrails are all in my head. And that's even yeah. slowing down. Uh, it, remember the story about Brownie the mule. You know, he's a fucking mule. You got to get his attention first before you work him. You know, he's. <laughs> Ugh, people. Yeah. Well, they confuse uh, being stern for being vicious. They confuse things like that. Subtle things that if you don't live through them, then you really don't know what it means, I think. It's experience stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Well, the energy over the years has been cut back and cut back. and Prices have gone up. It's gotten harder to travel and get around and and survive while you're out in the world. Now you need a plastic card to do everything. If you don't have a plastic card, whoa, what are you doing in the world? Yeah, I know. If you don't have one of those magic fucking uh, cell phones that cooks eggs for you and, you know, rubs your nuts when you're cold, (laughs) well, then you're a fucking bum. What are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah. D- put, uh, Dork Cake says it's a controlled collapse, which that's what I think it is, too. Exactly. And I think it. Somebody's in, controlling it. Sure. And if you're in small enough community, you'll survive whatever the fuck they have in store for whoever they have in store for. It won't include us. We're too small. They just got this way to make everybody fear what's only going to affect a few. And it doesn't take a lot. You know, they shoot down a plane or they kill some general or kill a senator or, or a, a president. And the whole world's in sh- terror. Oh, well, look what they're going to do to me. You don't yeah. see it? Th- I think it's that subtle, Mary, that we go into fear mode. And we don't know we're in fear mode because we're put in it by what we're reading and seeing. You well, be- and... And it's been kind of um, manipulated to be the default mode. Mm. Yeah, well, if I could stay aware of this idea I've got, that I'm in control of my freaking mood, not you. You can't piss me off with your fucking war. But they can. But I've got to allow them to. See, It's not them doing anything to me. It's me reacting to what I think I'm seeing. So, hmm. It's an illusion. It's the easiest way for me to survive the uh, life that I've got, you know? If I took this all too real, the pressure would probably make me snap like a pencil. You know, to take the weight of responsibility of being a representative of the greatest country in the world that all it really does is invades weaker fucking countries and takes all their shit from and lies to the people that live in the country... So they don't know that. They're the only ones that don't know what America does on American. Everybody else fucking knows. I had to move out of the country to find out what the fuck my country was doing to other countries. Oh, yeah. Because it's it's put under that umbrella of national security, which can mean just about whatever they want it to mean. And it's no different here. These folks are tied at the hip to American money. Okay? Just smaller. So the illusion of freedom is looser. It's more, uh, I'm subjective. So I allow myself to feel the freedom that I endure, you know, that endure. Um, involve myself. I don't even know how to explain that. I just do it. You know, I don't, it's not a problem. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just a thing. And I think everybody does it. And the ones that don't are the ones that are all tied to this politics and religion and education shit they got they got their uh got their freedom stolen from you know freedom is mental it's not physical you can't physically be free of anything being tied to somebody else in the it's the blessing is what it is because doing all this shit by yourself would be boring good god yeah and exhausting well what a narcissist you'd have to be to be alive at a time where, where everything is so easy and with a partner, it's even easier. 
You know, <laughs> it just does make sense to me. Mm, so I would. I don't know that. What? I don't know that it's necessarily a narcissistic tendency because narcissists need other people in order to feed their ego. They need other people. So a narcissist, I don't think, will ever be alone. Hmm. Well, I've been accused of being one. Yeah, but narcissists, they need to have someone that they can work their narcissism on. Right, right. Well, I also... Feed their own ego with. Yeah, but I see, I, I see hedonists get confused for narcissists from an onlooking perspective. Because you don't really know the other person. You're just making a judgment of words on a screen on the Internet most of the time. Maybe a voice on the radio. So you really don't have a connection, but you got an idea. And, eh. See, and words on a screen, all that other fun shit, I just think, oh, if I don't like those words, I just think they're a big old meanie poo-poo head. And Ooh. if I like those words, they're like, they're way cool. So, you know, I have very, my, um, uh, my standards are, are rather childlike, I mm. guess you would say. Oh, and on the good side of the news, I don't know if I should say this. Or I guess I just... Rob ran into some interesting uh, information. Huh. Let's just say that on the radio for the sake of it. Rob works in RLM. Mm-hmm. There you go. I, ain't gonna, I didn't ask him first. I, I forgot. And then I blurted something out. And I shouldn't have. Should I talk to him? Uh, talk to him and maybe Tuesday I'll bring it up again. But old Rob's up to something. So... Hmm... Yeah, you know, people on the internet have real lives in the physical in the physical world, separate from their electronic world. That's two different worlds. I know it's crazy, isn't it? You know, like right after we get done here. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go yeah. with the farmer, and we're gonna go to his mom's to have birthday supper, even hey, though yesterday Wayne. was her birthday. Well, if you want to cut out early, go ahead, and I'll shut the show down. You made it no, to the end. No, we got a couple oh. hours oh, oh. to get there. But. Oh, okay. Well, I, I it's a, always it's an hour and a half drive. Well, we did a sh- quick show tonight, I'll tell you. But I always like to do the show with you. Don't know why I just get along good with you for this kind of weird dork table crap I come up with. And you always play along no matter what ridiculous kind of crap I think of. So I, I like that about you. <laughs> well, you know, some of your ridiculous crap gets me started thinking about ridiculous crap, and then next thing you know, the whole dang show is redunculous. Yeah, well, there's a couple of links that I threw in there for Miss Mary into the notes tonight, and uh, we give it to it, give it a shot. We blamed evil for all your bad ideas, and then we talked about uh, seven things that turned out to suck ass. Those things were time, money, politics. Religion, medicine, belief systems, and energy sources. And if you don't believe yep. it, then maybe you know something we don't know. You should do a show and we'll listen to you. That's what I think. There you go. Because opposing opinions go. are great. You know, it's just when, uh, when it gets Oh, opposing personal, opinions are yeah. like a, a, a uh, you know, cattle prod, if you will. Sometimes they can be a cattle prod, but... <laughs> Always, opposing opinions are a, an opportunity to grow and to learn. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't really know how to define all that stuff. Change, I guess. But you know, I keep thinking about this round globe concept that we're all stuck with, and th- then all the added things that I've learned over the years about vibrating. When I, I do all the math in my mind, what little bit of shit that I know doesn't match the story I've been raised with. So hmm, I'm always going to be the dork that's always going, well, maybe you're wrong. You can't show me you're right. Show me you're right. Come on, show me, show me, show me, show me. And you know what? I'd I'd watched something on Netflix the other day about uh, <laughs> yeah. Flat Earth and Mark yeah. Sargent. Yeah. And there was a scientist in there that was saying that everybody that is – that is talking down to flat earthers and (laughs) that is um, treating them like they're idiots and stuff, just pretty much lost an opportunity to teach an, an inquisitive mind, true science. And I thought, Oh my, oh my, that, that comment right there 
has so many implications to it. Well, it's like true they, yeah. science. They have used the same principles behind defining physics as they do with money. It all changes depending on who you're listening to. So there's no given truth to anything. It's all this guy's opinion and that guy's opinion. Wait a minute. No, that that's not good enough for me. It's not whether the planet's round or flat is the issue. The issue to me is if you can't trust people to tell you the truth about money or electricity, how can you trust them with something the scope of the size of the planet you're on when that's so big, you're, it'll never interfere in your life in any way. What that is or isn't, it's just something to talk about. You know, but See, and what, what gets me is every time I talk to someone, and I'm not in any camp on the shape of the earth. I yeah. look more at the yeah. physical yeah. Okay. shape of the earth as opposed to physical. But whenever someone tells me, well, you just need to listen to, <laughs> but this, but that, but the other thing. And I just tell them, but they lied. I caught them Ow. in one lie. Yeah. Therefore, everything has been called into question. Exactly. Oh, well, you're just being too nitpicky. Wow. You need to. And it's like. Wait, they call it I science. They, in wait. a lie. And they call it science. It, yeah. There's no room in science for bullshit. That's where too many people watching Star Trek. This is going to make my head hurt. Anyway, so this we're up to the end here. Uh, thanks for doing the dork table with me this week. That was fun talking about these crazy ideas. And I enjoyed blaming all my bad ideas on evil. Evil must be destroyed. <laughs> ah, but in order for evil to be destroyed, people must destroy it within. No, you got to believe it's there. That's belief systems. We went through this earlier. Well, Weren't you listening? There is that. No, it's, it's for me. Bad choices that lead to bad results. Uh, and still, it's up to the person looking out, not the person looking in. Charlie well, Manson was those, the, was in prison. Those on the receiving end may think it's bad, while those on the giving end may think it's good. So the guy that played Charlie Manson was in prison, laughing at us on film for being dildos. So, oh, yeah. you believe, well, there you go, you believe whatever you see the way that it strikes you. It's all subjective. And you're just convinced to join a group so that you'll have support in your belief. <laughs> and who it's gives a, all in who, the presentation. And who gives a shit if you agree with shit or not? You know, the things that matter are not those things. Those are just stories and Crap to keep us arguing on and stay divided. And it works. There you go. Yeah. I've spoken! Anyway. I see Dork how you are. Is science is religion and a psyop. And I have, my, uh, I have my moments where I don't doubt that. Because, not because it doesn't exist, but because we've been lied to about what the details are to believe things that are not true. And with that, I will stop and leave you with last two last minute of the show, Miss Mary. Thanks a lot for Ooh. hanging out, everybody. Oh yes, yeah. thank you for playing Dorkular with <laughs> us. It's been a Dorkular day, <laughs> and and I hope everybody gets to continue with the Dorkular day. And you know, the Dork Table is where people talk about those things that is not to be talked about <laughs> in polite public. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. It's how we roll. Yeah, sideways and upside down. Well, depending on if Bubba runs in front of me or Rascal. Because Rascal has a tendency to run right in front of me, and then I go topsy-turvy and all wonky, and then which we'll, is not pretty. We'll be doing on In a Perfect World on Tuesday? Yes. Okay, that's 9 o'clock my time. I fucked up this week. and I don't know. I got stoned, and Cirque said something. I thought she meant... It was dinner time, not radio time. Fucking dangle. Uh -huh. That's that dangle of shit, I'm telling you. Yeah, go ahead. Blame, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>